Hello, YouTubers, friends, and patrons. Those are shills, death slicers, peasants, vassals, minions, meat sacks, yump, and yemenies. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today I want to talk about Yemen. And uh, here we have another uh, clusterfuck to add to the United States list of uh, foreign policy blunders. And in this case, we have another country. And, you know, sometimes you, you look around the world, and uh, it's not like the good old days. It seems like every, every country we touch, at least in uh, North Africa and the Middle East, uh, turns to shit. And, uh, we have Libya as an example. We have Syria as an example. We have Iraq as an example. Uh, any number of countries uh, as an example. And now Yemen joins that list. So the recent sequence of events um, is the, the government has now more or less uh, fallen, although mostly it's cabinet members who have resigned, the prime minister resigned, the president's resigned, and uh, now the, the parliament's left to uh, pick up the pieces. Uh, but now the, the capital is occupied uh, by the Houthis, and, um, and we have a really interesting dynamic uh, in going on in Yemen. I've done uh, numerous videos before about Yemen and the buildup of U.S. presence there, uh, the U.S. war there, and um, so I won't regurgitate the material from there. But uh, let's go through the sequence of events of what we have right now. So in uh, 2011, we had the tw uh, uh, presidential palace uh, was rocketed, and uh, Saleh, the, the then president, uh, was nearly killed. Let's remember that Saleh was in power uh, for 30 years and uh, was only recently uh, replaced by another even more compliant uh, U.S. puppet, uh, this guy named Hadi. And um, now Hadi has resigned. Uh, but uh, in 2011, uh, 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 Yemen was one of the countries that had a uh, um, Arab Spring. A lot of people don't know that uh, the government there was toppled as well. And uh, Saleh finally stepped down after uh, 30 years, after 2 million people marched. And, um, and then uh, uh, the parliament in 2012 granted Saleh immunity uh, because uh, those elites always protect their own, just because like we see in in um, Egypt now, with Mubarak now off the hook, um, thanks to the military government and all his pals. Uh, so then in 2012, they had an election. Hadi uh, was re-elected by 99%, so no fraud in that election. And, uh, and then uh, within a, a few weeks, there was uh, multiple suicide attacks with over 300 uh, Yemeni troops killed. And it's around this time that uh, U.S. drone strikes uh, started and that's one of the interesting things about the US war there. This is the US experiment uh, with no boots on the ground. Uh, there's been 118 drone strikes. Uh, interestingly, uh, all of them under Obama except for one. So uh, President Bush authorized one drone strike in Yemen, a very infamous one, and then all, all the other 118 have been under Obama. 800 people killed. And uh, so somewhat of war. This is the new uh, blueprint for the new war with uh, special special ops and drone strikes and uh, keeping uh, accountability and oversight to a minimum. So uh, so anyway, the once the drone strikes began, of course, we had a lot more suicide bombings and attacks. And in fact, uh, when Obama took office, there were only 300 al-Qaeda on the Arabian Peninsula in Yemen, and now there's 700 or more. And I found that figure uh, very telling because it's amazing uh, when you talk about certainly a country the size of Yemen, although it's a, a lot of it is a wasteland, um, 300 to 700 uh, Al-Qaeda members can theoretically hold an entire nation hostage, although they haven't been that successful in Yemen. But more importantly, the United States has to maintain a global empire and spend the kind of money, uh, the taxpayer money that is spent in a place like Yemen. Uh, to go after a, a mere handful in the, the hopes of ever uh, eradicating a, a group that's that small to begin with, they're uh, near zero. So in uh, 2014, uh, Hadi tried to uh, 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 face off some of the forces that have come into play now by federalizing Yemen and, and creating six big regions. We have to remember that uh, previously Yemen was uh, in three pieces and, and was uh, uh, united into one country, Yemen. But I'll get into that in a minute. Let's finish this sequence. In 2014, uh, the U.S. war on Al-Qaeda in Yemen uh, continues. And uh, in September of 2014, last year, there was a ceasefire uh, when the Houthis uh, pretty much 
uh, duplicated what they're doing now, putting pressure on the government and uh, occupying the capital. And, um, they even uh, managed to kidnap the chief of staff uh, this last January and take the presidential palace, which has resulted in what we've seen uh, happening right now. And um, so to give you a little background on, on what forces we have in play in uh, Yemen, uh, we have the Houthis, who are uh, Shiites, and they uh, uh, normally uh, hold uh, what is North Yemen. And then we have Sunni tribesmen uh, in the south, called, uh, and there's a Iraq uh, militant movement there uh, looking to uh, uh, reclaim uh, southern Yemen as a separate country, which it was for many years. And, uh, and then we have the uh, Al-Qaeda elements who are fighting both the government and the Houthis. So it's rather uh, uh, interesting that we find, once again, the situation in the United States uh, theoretically uh, would be su supporting the Houthis uh, because they are the ones who are fighting Al-Qaeda as well as the government. Um, but, uh, of course, right now it's hard, hard to say who the United States supports, uh, generally the government. And um, right now there isn't much of, of a government there. And there's always been a, a, a lot of talk about you know, connection to Iran, and uh, I'm sure it's tenuous at best, uh, the, the fact that there's three to 700 al-Qaeda running around uh, Yemen makes uh, any uh, point being uh, made by some kind of Iran connection. I've seen uh, every Western article maintains there's a staunch uh, Iran connection, uh, providing no evidence whatsoever. And then uh, more open-minded uh, media tends to say there is no uh, connection established uh, per se. But uh, another reason, of course, uh, Yemen is uh, in the limelight right now is because of uh, the uh, militant attack in Paris, the Charlie Hebdo um, killings. Um, uh, they partially were uh, in response uh, to the, what's going on in Yemen, um, just in Yemen, uh, Yemen. Uh, nationalist involved in that attack. But uh, let's go back, uh, like I said before, to a little bit of history before I uh, give the big picture on what uh, what matters about um, Yemen and what's going on there now. So it's uh, twice the size of Wyoming, so uh, uh, it's rather larger or smaller than you probably thought it was. Uh, population is about 26 million and uh, unemployment is 18 percent. Generally, the country is one of the poorest in the region, with uh, farmers, herders, and crafts, craftsmen mostly. Uh, they're Arab and they're Muslim. And, um, so anyway, uh, sizable population of Shiites and Sunnis, as we've seen that same dynamic uh, all over the region. And, um, and uh, just to give you an idea, how dire the position of Yemen is, and it's predicted in 2017 that uh, they're going to run out of water in the capital, and, uh, and that uh, the, the country will run out of oil. So they had oil uh, resources at one point that have uh, continued to be depleted. And as mentioned earlier, uh, there used to be three different countries, North Yemen, South Yemen, and the Yemen Arab Republic. Uh, and in 1990, they, they all became one country, the Republic of Yemen. And um, there are still tensions uh, pushing it back into uh, those three separate regions, which probably made sense in the first place. Uh, in 1993, they had their uh, elections, uh, and that's when Saleh was uh, elected, I believe. Um, no, he'd have to be elected earlier than that, because um, he was in office for 30 years. But then uh, 1994, the inevitable uh, civil war, 1998 increased militant Islamism, and then 1999, Ali Abdullah Saleh uh, wins uh, the, the election um, and again and in 2000 the border settled with Saudi Arabia so up to that point the, the border was rather tenuous and then uh, Yemen uh, certainly became uh, prominent in, in U.S. media in 2000 with the USS coal bombing occurring there and then 2004 there was a, a rebellion in, in North Yemen and uh, we see that uh, the results of that rebellion continuing here now 10, 11 years later. Um, so this uh, uh, dynamic between the Houthis and the government, the Sunnis in the south, uh, uh, it's been going on for quite some time. And um, then in 2008, uh, in interestingly, 
uh, there was a bombing of the U.S. Embassy, uh, the fourth time uh, since 2003 uh, the, the, the embassy in Yemen had been bombed. And then in 2010 is when the uh, U.S. Uh, started its intervention with drones, and, uh, and then in 2011, the Arab Spring. And uh, one story I did a, a report on uh, some time back that I, it, uh, was a published article, and uh, I don't never heard much more about it. And I don't know if, if there's what much veracity to it, but at the time, this was in June 2013, uh, supposedly uh, there was 1,500 uh, combat, U.S. combat troops sent there, and, uh, probably inevitably as advisors and or special ops. And um, anyway, they, they could very well uh, still be there, although uh, considering the situation there now, uh, it's pretty uh, pretty dangerous. So anyway, the, uh, the big picture for Yemen is that he, here we have yet another uh, country that uh, the U.S. meddled in, and uh, it may or may not have uh, exacerbated the situation that already existed, certainly when you look at the historical facts and the lead up to uh, the events that we have now, it almost seems inevitable. Um, and we see these uh, kind of things cycled again and again, and uh, we see the same uh, Sunni uh, and uh, Shiite Dynamic. Although it's kind of interesting because the Houthis apparently are saying, at least right now, they they don't really want to take political power and run the country. Uh, their one of their uh, demands, which seemed fairly uh, reasonable, was just more represent more representation in the government uh, for the Houthis. And um, so anyway, and then we have this Al Qaeda element, which, uh, however meager, seems to justify a, a huge amount of uh, American presence there. Uh, at least a drone presence, and uh, so this is uh, uh, also, like I mentioned earlier, a blueprint for uh, the kind of wars that uh, America is waging in a lot of different countries around the world actually right now, and um, will, will serve as a, as a model for the future. But in the meantime, we have uh, this country that uh, has had uh, Saudi Arabia uh, intervene before militarily, and we could we could easily see a Saudi Arabian intervention if uh, things get out of control in um, in Yemen. Although right now it seems like the Houthis, uh, although violence has, has upticked in the last few days, uh, the Houthis seem to have things uh, relatively under control. But uh, anyway, uh, there we have uh, another country to kind of keep uh, on our uh, radar right now um, as it seems to be collapsing. Uh, so we have a uh, a failed state that is uh, collapsing even further. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?